Back in the vest, that means we're back at work. How are you guys doing? Just making myself some soup here right now. We're getting a bit of a late start. Uh, the day today is Tuesday. I had a wonderful random drug test today. Yay! So I showed up to work and they said, Hey, go on over to the clinic. Gotta check your urine. So I had to go, uh, yeah, you, 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 you pee in a cup. And then they send it away for testing just to make sure you're legit straight edge that you're not doing any funny business. I had a few days off. They want to make sure those are random. They pop up at any time. I could have another one next time I show up at work, like back at the yard here. They never let you know. You just pretty much, you show up at the office to hand in your, hand in your paperwork and they're like, Hey, you. So, uh, who knows? It could be next week. It could be next month. It could be next year. It could be in five years. Who knows? I've gone in the past. I've gone like a few years without being selected, but that's the whole point of it, right? You never know. I think my father-in-law has already had like three and he just started here this year. <laughs> so completely random. So I, I had to go and do that. We'll get our results back soon. I have no worries. I'll pass. And uh, now we're uh, hooked up to a roll tight, a step deck roll tight trailer. We're going to take it over to Esther Hazy, Saskatchewan, small town on the southeastern side of the province, just west of the Manitoba border. We're going to drop it off with them tomorrow. And then I think we go up to the Paw, and I have a load of barrels or something that I'm going to pick up there and bring back here. Big plans, big plans. It's going to be a bit of a short week. So we're starting Tuesday night here already. It's only like a four or five hour drive to get there, so it won't take that long. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a short week because we got a bunch of stuff and appointments going on this week. Anyway, I'm setting up the truck here right now, getting my bed all set up. I want to talk to you about this mattress yet, very soon, very soon. I've had about... Has it been two weeks already? I think it's been two weeks on this mattress already. And I tell you what, this is this is an Odyssey truck mattress. Okay, they make it specifically for trucks, but they make it specifically to be like a home style mattress. So you feel like you're sleeping on your home bed. It's like sleeping on a cloud. I'm gonna tell you all about it in another video though. I'm gonna get all set up here and then we're gonna hit the road. We haven't pulled one of these in a while, eh? Actually, this is the first roll tight that old blue pulls. Well, she's pulled for me. Blue on blue matches nicely, eh? Looks good. So you saw that piece on the front of my grill, that black piece, we call that a winter front. For those of you who drive in warmer climates, maybe you haven't seen those before. That keeps my engine warm in the really cold winter days. You saw how there was four flaps or four holes open? There's actually flaps. I can close them all one at a time to reduce the amount of cold airflow that goes through my grill. When it gets really cold in wintertime, I close them all. The air can still get up around and it keeps the engine warmer, keeps my, my coolant a little warmer so the air coming into my cab is warmer. It's especially handy if you're sleeping, if you're not moving and you want to keep the engine warm overnight and idle it and keep the, the, the vents blowing hot air, but you got like a, a strong wind coming, blowing straight into your truck, that'll keep your water temperatures really low and you won't be able to keep your truck warm if you're parked. So then you close up your grill and the wind can't get in there, it keeps your truck warmer. It's a, it's a common thing you see on trucks in colder climates. I'm sure you've seen them before. I'm preaching to the choir here, I know, but for those of you who didn't know, uh, I call that a winter front. It's like a piece of leather piece that it's custom made for the grill of the truck and it just clips on, clips on there. I'll have to show you maybe in the daylight how it sort of clips on there and it just stays there all the time through the winter. Right now it's not that cold outside. It's only minus four Celsius. We're sitting at about 25 Fahrenheit or so. Not that cold so I keep those four flaps open so that I can still get good fresh air as I'm driving down the highway. But you better believe as January comes around and it starts getting down to minus 50, Slowly, one by one, those flaps are going to be closing and I'm going to be letting less and less cold air through there. Especially when I'm parked and trying to keep warm. But also when I'm going down the highway. But I don't close them while I'm going down the highway. <laughs> you know, there's always one person. I only got to explain it for one person. And if you're that person, that's okay. That's okay. Don't blame me. I don't blame you. It's okay. If you don't do this every day, maybe you don't. Oh, can he close them while he's driving? Are they like automatic flaps? No, I gotta go and park the truck, walk around to the grill and manually close them one at a time. 
Now you know. You don't gotta feel silly. That, that, that's actually a pretty good question. Maybe there are winter fronts out there that are automatic. You know, you just push a button on your dash and they close. If you can think it, it's already been invented and patented and mass produced in China. Passing over the yard scale before we have to leave or before we leave the yard. Uh, I have to move my fifth wheel all the way back again because this is sort of like pulling a van trailer. So my steers have 10,400 pounds on them. More weight will be on my drives because of that. So now you can see it in the mirror there. Okay, the numbers will flip around in just a second. Looks like it's 31,800 pounds. I'm allowed up to 37,500 in Canada. So now I've got a tri-axle in the back. And the tri-axle is sitting at 37,640 pounds. And I'm well under my maximum weight on a tri-axle there. So we're doing fine. We're pretty heavy, but uh, we're doing fine. allowed up to 42,000 pounds on the tri-axle. Sharp turn here. Test out those airlines behind me. <laughs> ah, these guys park with their rear ends hanging way out and then it's hard to get around here. All right, there we go. In 600 meters, turn left on Highway 59. Let's get out the gate first, Karen, one step at a time. How about in 30 meters, go through the gate if it opens? Will it allow us to leave? I don't know. Are we special enough? The lights at the corner here are still purple. How many years has it been now? At least two, right? At least two years that they haven't replaced these. Those are defective bulbs. Gotta replace those guys. I'm looking at you, Rishot. Risho, municipality. Your lights are still purple. Calling you out. It's been two years. On to Highway 59. Put our don't hit me flashers on. We'll start off in the left lane here because I'm on the left side of the road. And then as soon as possible, I'm going to merge into the right side there as soon as that vehicle passes me. Because I don't want to cut them off. Oh, there's another one. Okay. We'll let this one get past me too. This is why I have my four ways on. They know I'm moving slowly and to draw attention to the fact that I'm in the left lane. There we go. Now I'll move over. Brandon, uh, this away. So I'm gonna take Highway 1 West all the way into Saskatchewan and then uh, meander my way up towards, what's it called again, Esterhazy town? Is that what I said? Esterhazy, Saskatchewan. It's gonna be a nighttime vlog tonight. So this is the west side of Winnipeg. We gotta go through Headingley and then we'll be out on the open highway. Oh, oh, this on-ramp is always rough. They fix it and then two months later, it's terrible again. It's not as bad as it used to be. It used to just throw you out the window if you weren't wearing your seatbelt. No one coming? I don't need to fuel up because I fueled up uh, before I parked it last week.
for rolling into Astrahazy here. And there's the co-op that I saw on Google Earth or Google Maps. That's where I think I can find parking for tonight. How do I get there? Was that my driveway? That was my driveway, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought there'd be a driveway here. There's no driveway here. I need to go over there. Okay. Well, we gotta figure out how to get over there. So we'll go around. Oh, there's a Petro Canada here too. See a truck parked back there. No, this isn't a truck stop. This is just gasoline. Okay, okay. Or is there a truck stop here? I see one truck parked here. Okay. It's hard to know in these small towns sometimes where we're allowed to park, you know? So that guy parked in there. This guy's parked back here. I still think my best bet would be the co-op. It's nicely lit. There's lots of space there. As long as there's no signs that say no overnight parking, I don't see a problem. I feel safest parking there then. Here we go. Found the driveway. There's this guy that's parked here and someone left their trailers there. Alright. Guess we'll go through the pumps and come around and park beside them there. Maybe back in over there in that corner. We don't hit anything here. I'm a little tired, but I can still see straight, so make sure I drive straight. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna park right in there under that light. I don't see any sign saying that I can't. And I see some tracks in here. Someone else has parked here before already. So this will be our resting place tonight. these trailers here and then back up into that spot back there I feel like I'd be more out of the way back there than I would be parked right here beside these trailers get out and take a look because uh, I don't just pull the brakes and park I always take a walk around make sure I'm actually out of the way like I think I might be able to move over to the right a little bit more yet all right just gonna grab my jacket here throw this on it's gonna be a little bit chilly out there I think it's minus seven not too bad, right? But, eh, cold enough that might be considered a little nipply. Alright. Well, I'm put my outside feet on. Alright guys, let's go take a look at our parking here. See if I'm even straight. Well, 
Well, I'm definitely out of the way. People can get in the pumps there and pull around here without me being in their way. So that's not a problem. <clears throat> Let's take a walk back here. I always walk around my truck after I'm done my day. I, I don't like just pulling the brakes and going to bed. First of all, you have to do a post trip. You gotta walk around the truck anyway, see if you can hear any air leaks or, you know, check your tires, check your lights. Make sure everything works just like it did in the morning when you did your pre-trip. Okay, so I could probably move over a little bit yet, eh? Kind of thinking I can line myself up with that truck and I can come back a little bit further. Looks like the end of the lot is about here. Eh. My fear is that if I park like right behind this truck, someone might come and park in along beside me and make it a little difficult to get out in the morning, but that's doubtful. People aren't usually that ignorant. What do you think, old blue? Can we move you over a bit? back of this trailer here. I could almost fit in beside him there too. Uh, well. All right. Just a little bit over. I don't have to be all the way over. Something like that. I think that's good. Moved over about a half truck width. Sorry if my head movements are making you dizzy. I try to move my head slowly so that it doesn't give you whiplash in the process, but eh, it is what it is. Okay, right about there, I'd say. It's not back into the ditch. Yeah. Yeah, we right went there. I think this is gonna be, I think that's the one. I think that's a winner. Ah, that's a winner. How far back did I go? Let's go around the other way. Check all the poles. If there's no signs that say no parking. Everything I can see, it looks like I can park. I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, how far back did I go? Let's make sure I didn't put my back axle in the ditch or something. That'd be unfortunate. No, it looks like we're all good. Back right up to the edge of the lot which is right about here. You can see where the grass starts poking through. As much out of the way as possible, right? Yeah. All right, I'm happy with this. We're gonna pull, well, I've already pulled the brakes. We're gonna call it a night. joining me today everybody I know it was kind of just uh, a night vlog it's winter time it happens it's night all the time the Sun has left us and is hanging out with our brothers and sisters down in Australia right now and uh, you know you got to give them their turn it's only fair right they're gonna hang out with it for a few months and then 
uh, they'll start throwing it back towards us around uh, you know March and April and then we'll have it in full swing here next June so Australia enjoy the Sun all right it's our gift to you okay but please don't hold on to it for too long this this time okay it gets cold up here and dark have a good night everybody don't forget to subscribe to my channel I make videos pretty much every day my life on the road my life at home it's not just trucking uh, we got a baby on the way too. If you're new uh, we're due on my birthday April 1st best birthday present ever right really excited so there's a variety of content on this channel. I hope you stick around. See you in my next one.